Hey everybody, I'm really excited to introduce you to the formula parser for Serum. If you've got, if you have ever used Serum before, you've probably seen this thing that says enter formula and you probably wondered, what is that? Like, what, what, what is that? Um, basically what it is, is it's a way for you to create wave tables and that's something like this. It's a wave table is like a bunch of waves that, well, let me introduce you to it. So, so this is a wave table that I created using the formula parser and you'll be able to do stuff like this too. Like after you watch the video series, I might make 30, 40 videos. Who knows? I might, if you guys really like it, I might do as many as I can. Um, so let me, let me first play this. So you, you understand, cause it'll really make sense once I just play with it. So here I'm going to hit a note and I'm going to move before I start, I'm going to move through this wave table like this. I'm going to kind of slide through this by turning this knob. I'm going to move through the wave table. So watch what happens. It's really cool. So pretty cool stuff. Um, so, so basically you have all these slices of waves and you're moving through this table. And another example that I, just to show you all of the stuff, if I take an LFO and I put it on the wave table. So listen to this. This is a cool little effect that I, I made sort of a jagged, a jumpy LFO. You could, you can move these knobs and really make the. LFO any, any, you know, make it any shape you want, but let's just take a listen. So it's jumping through that wave throughout that wave table. Just that's another way of moving through that wave table. So let's jump in. Let's, let's kind of understand this formula parser what's going on here and before I do that I'm just gonna clear all this sometimes we have if you want if you're making a new wave table you've got to clear this to remove all okay we're gonna start really simply I just want to lay the foundation give you all the basics so we have a point where we start and then I could get more complex so we're gonna enter this thing called X and notice the result of that is sort of this line that goes from here and it goes all the way up here it's in this little window so let me go to this uh, well before I do that notice this is kind of like a grid like we have I could I could go over here and like increase the grid size make it really numerous I could like make all these so now it really looks like a grid so you, imagine you have a grid and on the grid really well let me go to this program now and it's a program called Desmos and what it is is kind of this grid so you, I, I think it's a good way to explain it from here because you can see the numbers on there so you know what I'm talking about so on this grid we have zero we start at zero called the origin and then we could go here we have numbers going to the right and then we have numbers going to the left and notice that these numbers are negative and then these numbers over here are positive and then these numbers are positive and these numbers are negative. This is called the Y axis. And this over here is called the X axis. That's a good thing to remember. This is the X axis. This is the Y axis. Let's say now, let's say we go from here. Let's say we want to go to uh, 0.5 on the X axis and 0.5 on the Y axis. Let's say we want to go right to this point. Okay. So what I'm going to do. Let's let's do that. Let's draw a little point here. You don't have to do this. Just understand that we're moving over five point five and then up point five. So we have a point here. That's what we make a point. Okay. So now let's let's do this. Let's leave that dot there and let's go to another point. Let's create one. We'll go to one and then we'll go to. Let's zoom out a little bit so I have more space. There you go. Uh, one and then one. Let's do that. We'll put a little dot there. So one, we've got a dot one, we've got a dot on a half, uh, there we half, and then we've got a dot. Now let's put a dot, let's zoom out a little bit more. Let's put a dot 1.5 
right there, right around there. And then up, we're going to go 1.5 in the right here in the Y axis. So let's see. Okay, cool. We've got a point. So now this is really cool. The reason why I'm, you're probably why why the heck are we learning this? So I'm just explaining to you. Uh, let's add a couple more points. Once you start understanding, do you st do you see a shape sort of? At least if if what what we're kind of what's if we f drew a line through from here to here to here, do you see the shape that is kind of emerging? The picture is kind of coming together now. Where well, we kind of have this downward sloping line, but let's keep going. Let's let's go uh, zero zero. Oh, okay, we're zero zero. Now I'm gonna move along a little bit faster. Now I'm gonna go to negative one and negative. So now I'm gonna go in this direction. I'm gonna go over to point five, right here, and then I'm gonna go down to point five. Okay, and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go to negative one half, which is down there, and then I'm going to go to one. So, okay, so now this gives you a better idea of what Y serum. I'll explain why when you put X in. Well, we'll get to that in a second, but notice first that there's something going on here. There's a picture that's starting to emerge. And Basically, if we draw a line through these dots, let's see what happens. Oh, okay, so we kind of get this diagonal line. Does that look sort of familiar? Let's go back to Serum. Oh, wow, okay. So we have the same thing that we, we figured out right here in Desmos. We figured out this, this graph. We kind of, now we know, oh, okay, that's where this, this diagonal line is coming from. Um, in Serum, it kind of relates to what we did here. Now, what's missing in Serum that I think is kind of confusing at first is really what we're doing here is we're, we're saying like y is equal to x. And what that means is like if we let, – let's say we, were, we went to 1, we went over 1, and then we, we went up, we would also be at 1. So the y-axis – equals the x-axis. Do you see that? So we're going 1 and then up 1. The same goes for here. We're going over 1 half and then we're going up 1 half. So it's meeting at both 1 half and 1 half in both. So that's why we say y equals x because they're, the, they're really the same thing. And that's what the picture when y equals x, this is the picture that you get. So that's why serum gives you that particular picture now they take out the y equals part they don't they just say x because because you're going to notice that you don't the y is not really that important well at least in they just they took out that part because they just took the x part of it so so just be aware of that so that's why i mean we could do that we could draw we could do y equals x we could do that and the same picture will emerge but I think they did it just, you know, so it's one extra less thing to write in. They're just going to assume that y equals x. So, okay. All right. So now we're going to go back to our graph really quick. And now what if I, what if I do, what if I do three times x? Watch what happens. Now all these points are going to be, if I did a three, oh, it's not working that way. I thought, it, I thought maybe it would actually move the points for me. But try to imagine those points increasing by three times now. So now the, the line is much more slopey. It's much more uh, steep. So let's go to Serum and let's do that. Let's do five times X. Do you see how now the slope gets really steep? Now in Serum, uh, we we don't the the top of this window right here is actually only it only goes up to one, so it doesn't go beyond one. So that's why you're not seeing this like here in this program. You could zoom out up to all the way to fifty, but Serum doesn't do that. They just it's basically what they're doing is they're giving you a window from one to to zero to one 
zero to negative one, zero to one, zero to negative one. It's a small window, so you're not going to get this this uh, big window. So so that's why you're not really seeing the whole picture. But so let's see what that sounds like. So five, and now let's go back to one. Let's go to like fifty. Fifty times x gonna be really steep now all the numbers that okay let's go to a so now I encourage you at home you could try like hmm let's try 200 let's see what the... let's try what that is wow 200 okay maybe like 2,000 or 50,000 you could try all those uh, I encourage you to really experiment with it now we're gonna try something kind of cool uh, which comes in handy later, I think more so than now, but at least just to give you a, get your feet wet. So let's start at X and see this thing. This is now our wave table. We're going to make a little wave table. This is one method that you could do, which is, uh, is a kind of a fast way. If you just want to do it this way, this is an easier method, which I like. Sometimes I'll do this. So we have X, then we're going to click this plus button and that makes the second uh, segment in our wave table and now we're gonna go do five times X so that's our second segment now let's go to our third we're gonna click the plus let's do 50 uh, 55 times X and let's do one more let's do how about 300 times X so you can make your own little wave table with four segments right here just by you know multiplying a number of t times X so let's go back. Let's click out. So here we've created our little wave table. Let me get rid of this LFO. I forgot to remove that. So now, it's not really that different. You know, when you're moving from, you could kind of slightly here. You can't really hear a big change. So, uh, a slight change, but then you could you could you could attach that to an LFO right here. I'm going to drag this over, and now I'll take a look. I might speed it up. I click here, BPM, and I really if I want to really go fast throughout the wave through the wave table, I could just crank this rate up. See how fast that goes, or if I want to slow it down, I could I could decrease. You know, I could. Take whatever I want, whatever rate I want. But so that's an example of just if you want to make a wave table just with four slices, you don't need to have the one that I showed earlier might have had 500 slices. But, you know, this one has four slices. Very just want to keep it basic for you to, so you understand the concepts first, uh, master those, and then we'll go from there. Okay, cool. Okay, good. So, so one of your assignments, well, not assignment, we'll just mess around with that. Okay, we're going to do something else now. Um, just one other thing. I'll explain it in the next video. I'm just going to give you one more thing that you can use um, for... I'll explain it next time more. But just to get, just give you something else to, to type in this parser. It's called a sign. Just copy what you see here. Sign pi times x. Now, look at what happens. It's kind of a wave wavy kind of line now and the sound oh, I forgot to remove that okay it's kind of like a pure tone it's it's uh, if you click on this thing this thing with the arrow it'll show you this wave only has one tone one frequency in it and this is the frequency this is called the fundamental frequency and that's what this sine wave consists of one frequency So we could do our same concept. Let's try four times that frequency, that, that sine wave. So now that sine wave is growing by four times. You can't even see it because it cuts off, but it, it would go probably up to there. It would probably go into this area right here, but we cut off. So now if we hit this, wow, we see all these other frequencies in there. So eventually, at some point in this series, you'll understand why these frequencies look the way they do. 
But for now, I just want you to get comfortable just even using these things. You could do 24. So now see, now look how the frequency's changed. All right, guys. Well, that's it. That's it for today. I think that's a good little intro to, to try, uh, you know, experiment with. And for the next video, we're going to expand on that idea. All right.